Dental implants are rising in popularity, but what the public doesn't know is reports of injuries are also surging. Investigative reporter Chris Pickle uncovered the rising number of problems with this procedure, and what you uncovered should be a wake-up call for the dental industry, really. Absolutely, and the public in general, because we are seeing dental implants advertised everywhere. And our investigation uncovered almost a half million reports of problems with dental implants. That was for last year alone, almost a half million. And tonight, we are exposing how much training dentists are required to have to perform the procedure. I don't want to be sick anymore. I don't want to be trying to con convince doctors that my mouth is making me sick. Sitting in a dental chair offers a glimmer of hope for Ginger Peters, who suffers multiple health problems she says started when she got her dental implants. Just show me how easy it is to pop these out. Pop, ooh, that's pretty decent. Okay. Between her teeth out. moving and pain in her mouth, Ginger can't even chew food. The reason why your prosthetic doesn't fit very well is these spacing is a little bit too close together, and these gold pieces are not tall enough for the lab attachments inside this denture to actually grab onto. So Those posts sticking out of her gums are too small to hold her teeth in place, but the problems run deeper. Doctors James Chaffin and Calvin Brown run CR Smiles Dental Center. They also created the Simply Implant Institute, training other dentists to do dental implants. The implant is a screw-like device drilled into the jawbone. A second piece connects the implant to a tooth or set of teeth. It is a profitable procedure for the dental industry. Online searches show costs range from $3,000 up to $90,000, depending on the number of implants and replacement teeth. The doctors offered to help Ginger after seeing her in our investigation last November. These are the posts. My gums are in a constant state of irritation, infection. I'm just always sick. Were you always sick before the dental implants? No. That investigation exposed concerns over contamination on implants and that manufacturers do not have to reveal all the materials used in the devices. But it was these quick glimpses of Ginger's x-ray that caught Dr. Brown's attention. A new scan provides a clearer picture. How many of those implants do you think need to come out? Right now, I'm looking at at least out of the seven, probably about five of those implants at least. Because they're not in the proper position. That's right. And they're not the proper size. That's right. Examining the images, he says there are several concerns they routinely see when patients come to them with problems. And I just see right away that uh, positioning implants a little bit too large. This one's probably tilted a little bit towards um, the facial, and that's why perhaps there's some loss of bone right there. It's rubbing, it, it hurts. It's like having a pebble in your shoe for 10 years. Your whole body's going to hurt. And it's all engineering. So I see a lot of these, even these simple denture cases, where we'll place four or five on a patient, a doctor will place two. Well, two is not enough. Reports of problems with dental implants recently passed 3.1 million. That was over a 25-year span. But it's how quickly reports are now surging per year that is astounding, going from less than 13,000 in 2018 to more than 477,000 in 2021. More than 98% of last year's reports are categorized as an injury to the patient. Less than 2% are device malfunctions. The most common problem? The implant failed to bond or lost its bond with the bone. When that happens, the implant is removed. All this data is located in a FDA database known as MOD. This is crucial information the public should know, but it's difficult to access. I mean, uh, there's a lot of reports that come into the FDA that indicate a device may have failed, and those reports are almost inaccessible to the public. Madrice Kynard discovered the surgeon reports. The former FDA employee created Device Events, a company that specializes in searching the government database. So these are catastrophic failures that we're seeing. The purpose of the database is to monitor issues with medical devices, but the reports are often incomplete and provide limited information. 
What we fail to see is what the outcome is for the patient. What did that mean that that patient had to do or what did they go through? Um, did they have to get multiple bone grafts to replace bone? Did they have to, um, did they lose a tooth and never have the ability to even replace it? Another key question rarely answered, was the problem caused by the device, the patient, or the person who placed it? I think half of the implants that I've been doing are clinical error, being honest with you. Do you feel the average dentist is adequately trained to place dental implants? I don't feel so, no. When we attempted to answer the question, how much training is required to do dental implants, the American Dental Association told us implant dentistry is not a specialty and can be done by any general dentist. Of the more than 40 accredited dental schools we contacted asking if students place implants as part of their curriculums, responses ranged from declining to answer to students have to pass an exam, not complete a certain number of these procedures. The Commission on Dental Accreditation, which sets the guidelines for dental schools, did not respond to our repeated attempts to contact them. Turns out there is no requirement that dental students have to place even one implant during their training to become a dentist. But any dentist can do implants, no additional training required. So uh, my partners and I, what we really, really believe is a lot of times there's doctors out there that they don't know what they're supposed to know. Now, as a patient, you have the right to ask your dentist how much and what type of training they have when it comes to placing implants. Now, there is more to this investigation. Some people are more likely to have problems with their implants. Coming up tonight at 1014, we're going to look at the health factors that can cause complications and also concerns that doctors are not properly warning people. Yetta, we'll see you back here at 1014. Yeah, high opening report. We'll see you here in about seven minutes, Chris. I don't want to be trying to con convince doctors that my mouth is making me sick. I think half of the implants that I've been doing are clinical error. A lot of times there's doctors out there that they don't know what they're supposed to know. Earlier in this newscast, our investigation revealed over 3 million reports of problems with dental implants and exposed the limited training that dentists are required to have to perform the procedure. Well, it is important to note that not everyone is a good candidate for dental implants. And we're looking into concerns that people are not getting that warning. I've done ortho, general, um, periodontics, endodontics, and oral surgery. How often were you seeing implants fail? Probably four out of every 10. Cindy Cantorano spent 40 years as a dental She's assistant. She says in her experience, specialists such as periodontists had significantly higher success rates than general dentists. She's also concerned patients are not being fully informed that their health issues may cause problems with the implants. And the doctors, I feel, need to express to the patients more that the implants may not last. They may not integrate well um, due to their health, their diet, um, smoking habits, things like that can also cause them to fail. We found studies showing risk factors for complications include poor oral hygiene, bone quality, being over 60, smoking, diabetes, chemotherapy, radiation, and steroids. And if you look at the extremely high success rates in studies, sometimes used to advertise implants, they do not reflect the real life success rates in private practices, partly because only ideal patients are used and the dentists are experts. After Ginger's exam, the doctors plan to work with an oral surgeon, hoping to help her get back some of the quality of life she says dental implants took from her. I want to build some strength back up and be able to get some food in me and leave my house and interact with the world. It's really not clear if anyone is going to look into the increasing injuries. The FDA regulates implants, but not health care providers. So the FDA does not have any say on what doctors do with these devices. And when I told the American Dental Association about the huge surge in reports of problems and asked, if the organization intended to take any action, they stopped responding to my emails. Chris Pickle, Arizona's Family. Chris, thank you 